Cordy Cox here with former Baylor assistant basketball coach Abar Rouse. Abar, I've watched Show Sports, new documentary, Disgrace. You do an unbelievable job with the interview portion of the documentary, uh, one which you are interviewed quite a lot. Uh, truly remarkable, your story. And for our viewers, can you give a brief history of your time uh, at Baylor? Well, Courtney, I was at Baylor as a student, as an undergrad, in 95, 96, 96, 97. And then I went and began my coaching career, and I came back to Baylor in 2003. I had actually been on campus for probably about 12 days before, you know, all hell broke loose. Oh, that is, I couldn't put it any better myself. Uh, you watched the documentary, and as a viewer, it almost, it's almost too crazy that you think this must be fake, but this was your life. Uh, tell me about the exact moment when you realized you were caught up in a, in a pretty bad situation. Well, when Coach Bliss came in and, uh, you know, he, he basically told us that he was looking for somebody to say that they paid Patrick Denny East tuition, uh, I knew that the bottom had dropped out, but there were signals all along the way that uh, indicated to me that something was amiss. Something is kind of fishy here. You didn't have all the pieces, but you kept getting a piece by piece by piece. You couldn't put the whole puzzle together, but you, you didn't feel good about it. Well, and I think as a viewer, I, I started getting nervous for you. Uh, the part where, you know, you, you get the, the stack of papers that firing of assistant coach highlighted, and, and that's when you get yourself a tape recorder and you start secretly taping Coach Bliss. Uh, did you ever think there was another way out, another way to get the situation fixed? Well, I honestly believe that he could say, given the fact that he was prepared to go to just about any length uh, to ensure that this story went through, I I felt like there was no other way for me to go and ensure that the truth remained. You know, e either I could get it from the inside and 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 stay where I was, or I could be an outsider and I'd be maybe getting accused. You know, the police had already come to see me, and we didn't know whether the police were telling the truth or whether whether they were lying. So when they when they asked me about being a drug dealer. I was, you know, I thought is that that was coming from Coach Bliss. You know, I had other assistant coaches telling me not to trust Coach Bliss, that going in there with the police and him was a setup. That was said to me literally a moment before I walked in with the police. And then the police asked me, hey, are you using the team to deal drugs? That was literally said to me by a man that had been with Coach Bliss as an assistant at other schools. And I'd been there for 12 days, so I, I really didn't know, you know, another way to go to make sure that the truth prevailed. Well, and it, it, it is crazy that watching the footage of, of Carlton Dotson, who says, that you were doing that as well. Did you feel like you were, you know, alone in this situation, that kind of Baylor was against you in some way? Well, I didn't feel like Baylor was against me as much as I felt like I didn't know who to trust. Who could I put my faith in? I've got my head coach saying that the police are with him and uh, they're on our side and, and uh, the committee is with me. The president was obviously with him. You know, he had given him a, a big ringing endorsement at a press conference, you know, so the athletic director's with him, you know, so I, I didn't know. You know, I felt kind of alone and abandoned kind of because it felt like everybody was, you know, potentially in on it, and you're like, I, I don't want to be involved in this. I don't want to get involved in this. And then when coach directly makes you, he makes you, then you have no choice. You have no choice but to do what you have to do for not only yourself but for your school and for your players. Well, and, and as a viewer, I, I mean, I think that what you did was extremely brave. I'm sure a lot of viewers will have that same feeling as well. But I, I think when I watched the documentary and put myself in your shoes, the hardest part to watch were legendary coaches like Jim Beheim, Mike Krzyzewski, who kind of go against the fact 
that you did the right thing. How, how do you handle that backlash, and, and does it ever get to you? The backlash from uh, Delvin Sampson and, and Jim Bay, uh, uh, that's a little easier to, to handle because those guys are NCAA convicted, convicted felons themselves. So that's a little easy to handle. I'll tell you which one was hard was Coach K because he's my hero. Growing up, we ran motion. I studied motion. I, all my basketball uh, uh, prowess came from this man who, who was my hero, who I believe honestly would want me to do this, would want me to do the right thing. And so it was, you know, very, very disheartening to me to have him say the things that he said. But at the same time, I understand that in the coaching fraternity, which is a lot like the mafia at times, you know, those guys have history. They come from the Knight family together. So he's going to try to stick up for his brother. Well, I mean, the documentary, it's, it's basically two stories in one. You know, the terrible murder of Pat Dennehy and the scandal that was going on in the front office. Uh, do you have your own theory of, of what happened with Pat? When you say what happened with Pat, what do you mean? Um, the fact that it, it kind of went that it was only Carlton who was there, who was responsible for the murder, but then you have Harvey um, also being interviewed in it, um, saying, you know, we never had problems, we never got into arguments, I was never threatening him. Do you think it was a sole person who was responsible for his death? I think there's a sole person that admitted to it. Um, you know, but the questions remain absolutely. You know, th there were so many fishy things going on that we ne that I truly never got answers to. The questions that I still have. So to be able to say that I, you know, it was just one person. I just know one person admitted to it. Uh, do I think others uh, could have been involved? I do think that's a possibility. I know that there were other, you know that there were, we were told that other people were out there shooting guns with them at different times. Well, and, and, and in the documentary, you say that you were um, asked to drop Larry um, off at, at a bus station. Do you, ever, do you go back to that all the time in your mind and think, oh, my gosh, did, did I have somebody in my car who had just, who had just been part of this horrible, horrible uh, murder? I do think about it all the time, you know. Uh, at the time, it didn't seem like like a, a, a big deal. It just it, it did seem like a big deal because they had asked about the gun, and I knew about that. But at the same time, I didn't know whether that was true or or not. So, you know, maybe they just want him to get out of town because they they've had enough of him. So I, I really didn't know. But yes, it was very very confusing, obviously, for me, because I didn't have all the facts. So dropping him off at that bus station became more relevant to me at the end when Coach Bliss says it's because we did it for Harvey. So that's where that really, like, in your mind, you're like, oh, my goodness. You know, am I, am I, did I help him get away? And you now do you do unbelievable work. Uh, you teach at a jail while while Coach Bliss has found kind of coaching success again in the college level. You want to call it that? Does that ever bother you that he kind of got away unscathed? And when's the last time that you and he were either in the same room or, or had any contact with each other? I'm going to take the latter first. There's no need for me to talk to Coach Bliss anymore, and let me tell you why. Because I knew who he know who he is. Uh, he's the same guy he was then. If you watch the documentary, you'll recognize that. 13 years later, 14 years later, he's still the same guy. Nothing's changed. There wasn't a fall to grace. You had to be in grace to fall to grace. You, you, I'm just telling you, nothing's changed. So I, I don't need to speak to him. The, the most disheartening thing about it is, yes, he's still coaching and, and mentoring young men, but it's disheartening that people can't find better leaders out there. You know, the most frustrating thing for me is I know I'm a, I'm a leader. I, my experiences, my challenges that I've overcome in my life, it make me that. You know, the way that I've dealt with them, my character, you like to think that those are the type of things that parents want their kids around, that presidents want for their, uh, their the administrators want for their coaches, from their coaches. 
I don't know if that's necessarily true. That's the disheartening thing. Uh, when when you have proven that you can win, sometimes winning supersedes doing the right thing. And I hate for people to validate that. And with that hire, that's what they did. They validated that. And to me, that's a shame. But the shame's not on me. I did the right thing. Well, and I, you bring up that he's still the same person. I think I was even taken back watching uh, the documentary, and I'm sure you were uh, – I mean, maybe you weren't blown away, but when he asks, when Coach Bliss asks if the camera's still on and kind of goes into this story um, thinking he's off camera, when you watched that part of it, was it the same guy that, that you remember? I mean, that part is, is almost the craziest part of the whole story that now so far, so far later, he still has this story in his head that he's, that he's telling people. Courtney... When I first recorded Coach Bliss in that office, if you'll go back and you'll look at those transcripts, one of the things he says that wasn't necessarily in the documentary is that I'm a role player. I love the role play. If you go back and you just listen to that part and then you listen to what he says next and then you watch the documentary and you watch what he does, I felt like I was sitting in the office all over again. This is who this man is. There's no mistake about that. This is who this man is. And I, I, it's frightening to me as a parent that other parents would allow their children around them. Well, and I and I talked to director of Disgrace, uh, Pat Condelis, and he said, Condelis, and he said that uh, Coach Bliss was, was kind of jumping at the opportunity to be interviewed for this movie, whereas it took him a long time to get you to agree to this, uh, what what was the hesitation on your end to be a part of uh, to be a part of this story, this documentary? Well, it was important to me that I not do anything to upset his parents um, and and um, disgrace his memory, Patrick's memory. You know, I, I I've spoken on the subject quite a bit, so I thought maybe I had said all that I needed to say. But I'm going to tell you that um, Pat, the director, did such a wonderful job of compiling all the pieces and, and explaining to me how his quest was only for the truth, that it made, and, and this, the other thing, he was, he was putting together a historical document. And, and if you were going to cover the, the greatest scandal in the history of college athletics or basketball, that... You wanted to make sure that your story was told accurately, and that won me over. I'm going to tell you at the end of the day, I didn't. I wanted to make sure that Coach Bliss could not be uh, write rewrite history, be a re history uh, history revisionist. You know, I wanted to make sure that he wasn't able to distort the facts. I wanted to make sure it was accurate. Well, and you did a great job to show both ends of the story because I think if you were missing, it would be kind of uh, all about Coach Bliss's side. But you look at what's going on at Baylor right now, and as an alumni, as a former, uh, you know, coach there, the timing of when you shot this movie, when you were interviewed, and, and when it's coming out, is it all crazy for you to look at the school that I'm sure you have great memories of that you are you love in, in a sense, be kind of the center of, of so much scandal, whether it be disgrace coming out, but also the football program. Is this a Baylor problem that, that these scandals keep happening? Well, I think the people that are, are, are choosing the leaders um, need to make sure that they, they do a better job of screening probably. Uh, we got There's leaders out there. There are leaders out there, true leaders, true spiritual leaders and true Honest people, you just gotta want that. You gotta, you gotta want to find that. You know, um, you gotta believe that that not everybody at the university is bad. Not everybody wants bad uh, things to happen in athletics, or 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 so desperate to win that they're willing to sacrifice their principles. Um, and those are the people you need to find so that they can be on the committees that choose these people. Well, Abar, thank you so much for taking the time to talk with me. You want to make sure to see Disgraced on Show Sports 
when it comes out on Friday, March 31st at 9 p.m. Eastern.